Hello and welcome today to Plan to Paint. <clears throat> today we are going to be doing a uh, landscape kind of uh, inspired by the colors of the rainbow. I'm trying to use a uh, use this as a step to practice our value control as we move forward into the from the distance into the focal point and a bit on composition practice. So I've not yet prepped my surface. This will be the last. Uh, the last stream where I include applying the um, <clears throat> base wet and wet white layer, the base layer down onto the canvas. In the interest of time, we'll be starting the stream with that already step already done, and I'll put a video out there and link to it each week that will describe creating that you know preparing that surface. So let's go over our palette today. Um, I haven't set up on a specific order to have my colors in just yet. It's it's close to what Bob Ross used, but I think I change it up a little bit each week. So I'm gonna solidify my palette choices. Um, we start out. We got our uh, liquid wet, for be lack of a better term, our titanium white. <clears throat> um, got a little uh, Prussian green, a little thalo turquoise, Prussian blue, lamp black, um, Van Dyke brown. Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, Cad Yellow, and Bright Red. So let's first get this surface prepped. And we're just going to pick up some of the more liquidy white. I think I need to pre I'll be pre mixing some of this as well to help save on time here. We end up getting too much time involved in just preparing our surface. And don't actually get the painting till we're like 10 minutes into the video. Nobody has time for that. On a repeated basis. If you're just joining me today, one of the things I mentioned on Wednesday is that the chan channel is going to be seeing a few changes here. One of them is that we're reducing the number of times we stream down to just twice a week. So it'll just be Wednesdays and Fridays at this point going forward. And I am removing the direct painting paintings. So each session will be a painting done in this technique because <clears throat> the redirection of this channel is going to be creating wall-worthy art, what I'll call wall-worthy art, something that you, I, various other people would appreciate to have hanging on their wall. It's not going to be one that's destined to the back of a closet, never to see the light of day. And to accomplish that, this is a journey for me. I've learned some technical skills in painting, but artistically, I've still got a journey to go. I've got skills such as composition, again, like we're working on today, value control, capturing that depth, layering the planes properly that has been lacking in my other paintings and so this time I did a little bit of time with uh, some thumbnailing just doing that digitally trying to lay out lay out the composition before we start so I don't end up wasting people's time on paintings that just no one's going to really like because it's a bad composition from the start so I've been reading up on composition studying that a little bit and time that I have in between my other life responsibilities. I'm going to go back over this. Got a little bit of a thicker layer than I want on here, so i to smooth this out, pull some of it off. Right, so I've been working a little bit on composition skills, because at the end of the day, no matter how technically competent you achieve a painting, if the subject matter and the layout of the painting aren't very good, it's still not going to be a likable painting. Nobody's going to want to hang it up. I think it's actually more important to have a, well, good composition, even if executed poorly, oftentimes will result in a painting more people would be interested in putting on their wall than a perfectly executed poor composition. So we're going to be focusing on those skills as we move forward. And then each of these paintings will continue to give us practice on our technical skills. 
in this method. I'm going to be using various a la prima techniques. It's not always going to be large brushes. I'm going to dip down to smaller brushes. For certain materials, I would like to get into where we're painting scenes of, you know, countrysides, towns, farms. Won't always be landscapes, even. Maybe a uh, very close up of an orange cut, orange segments, or I mean, when you're working a orange that's this big. You can still use fairly large brushes and you can still move fairly quickly. And as long as you've got a good composition and you lay out your values and your colors and your edges properly, you will be good to go. Alright, so we have our surfaces prepared here. I'm going to bring down, using the same brush, we'll pull down a little bit of, uh, yeah, that's the phthalo. Phthalo turquoise, and to that I'm going to add some alizarin crimson. What we're going to start off with is a violet, violet sky with indigo clouds. So we're going to do the rainbow in, in reverse. So instead of going red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, we're going to go backwards. Violet, indigo, blue mountains, green pine trees, um, <clears throat> yellow and orange. Uh, deciduous trees and then some uh, red bushes along the front. <clears throat> so we want this to be bring up a little bit of titanium white in this. We'll make it fairly light in that background. See our way off in the distance. And load up a bit of paint. We're going to start in the top left corner. We're going to bring this across. Start in the other corner and bring it down. And we're just doing little crisscross strokes, working our way down. And as we work down, it'll get a little bit lighter. And we'll back up. Whenever we pick up more paint, we want to start at the top. It's going to darken that area. Pull it down. this out. Alright, kind of a very light, light sky. We're going to take our fan brush. We're going to bring down a little Prussian blue under this. Not a whole lot. But we want this to look like too much blue. I'm going to have to go back and bring down a little more crimson. So we're going to pull some crimson over. <clears throat> and so we've got a nice kind of an indigo, leaning a little towards the blue. Dance some clouds up in here. And just wherever you think you're going to have a little cloud in your sky. There's some composition rules that would explain maybe how you want to do that more so. They're good to read up on. There's you know rules of thirds, there's a golden ratio. And there's shapes. So you want to keep pay attention to the shapes that you're kind of making in your clouds here. So they just kind of lazily <clears throat> float across the sky. And we're gonna take a dry brush. Eh, let's go back to our sky brush and take some of that paint off. We're going to go 
along and just fluff. So we're just with the corner of the brush very lightly, just pulling up in a swirly motion. And this makes a fluffier representation of the clouds and kind of turn your direction as you get to the middle of the clouds. So the edges are kind of rolling back in on itself. And once we've done that, we're going to go across very lightly and blend these out. Barely touching the canvas. All right. We can go back in, pick up a little bit more of this blue. Can actually lay in a, a little bit of black to this, a little bit of gray, or put a little bit of shadowing under the bottom of these clouds. This gives them a little bit of depth to themselves. And we'll lightly fluff that and blend it out as well. However many clouds you want to have in your sky, it's a bit of a misnomer. Bob wanted you to have fun, enjoy creating worlds. But if you want a great picture, you have to really think about. He's always, you know, he switched between saying, "Okay, you got big decisions, and you've got stuff you can just kind of let flow." But at the end of the day, as you do this more, you'll start to realize it's worth what works and what doesn't work. But it's also worth exploring and reading a little bit more about what uh, what good composition rules and skills would be. So that as you work on your own compositions, they create much better uh, for the results. I'll bring down the depression blue into here. We're going to have some blue mountains today. Another thing for this technique that I've not been doing well is mixing just right. I tend to want to overmix. <clears throat> I think I'm going to add a little bit of black to this just to bring down the, the value a little bit, a little bit more towards gray. This is our base value. We're going to have highlights on top of this, so we want it to be a little bit dark even though it's off in the distance. So, draw this out. Cut across. Let's see here. Here. 
And having that nice sharp top edge is very important in establishing the edge, <clears throat> sharp edge in the background. It establishes how it sits against the horizon. So we'll just take that and fill in more of the mountain here. Kind of keeping in mind which direction your train's going to flow. touch the edge. We want to pull in the direction of our, of our land, the angles of our land. Pull that down. And from a composition standpoint, going on here is using a bit of the rule thirds and so this is about a third of the way across the canvas and about a third of the way up so it's a focal point it's where these lines intersect it's called the rule of thirds and for whatever reason it tends to be and then we're going to pull back up with that lightly ever so lightly pull up with the lay of the land here but for whatever reason, the human eye finds ratios of the third odd numbers to be appealing. Now we're just going to kind of go over top of this, blend out the bottom of the mountain, creating a little bit of mist. worry too much about what's going on down clear down in here because we're going to be painting over top of that looks like we've got a some of this liquid white we have up here. And we're going to take what we have left of our mountain base. We're going to mix this together a bit. I'm going to go much lighter than that, so I'm going to bring in some titanium white. Oops, we're dripping some of our oil. We have a good shadow value for our shadowed side. Probably still need to come up and, and value a good bit, so take a big bit of this titanium white over here. I'm just going to mix that. Alright, so we got our lit side. To be very light, so we're going to bring down some of our white up here, cut across <clears throat> the lit side ever so slightly, just with the lay of the land, 
slow down. And we want the bits of dark showing through. As it breaks up the landscape, gives you little nooks and crannies. You didn't have to go to the effort of actually putting on. flow of your mountains, the way the land is, which side is in the light. You have to, before you get this far, have determined where your skylight, where your light and your picture's coming from. So we've got our light coming in off of the right side of the canvas again. It tends to be a direction I like to use. <clears throat> now we've got that one, we're going to pick up our shadowed side value, uh, pull it down smooth, and cut across. Let's get that roll, and we're going to start on the left side, and we're going to lightly, barely, barely touching there. Let the canvas pull the paint right off the knife. Made it to another Friday. That's always good. Looks like I may have this a little too close to the value of the background once it's blended on. <clears throat> but either way, we have our nice mountains. We'll take this and we'll blend up a little bit here. We're not going to go up near as far, so we just put all that effort into. Creating our mountains, we don't want to make sure we get a little bit of flow in that direction. And we're just going to come across to blend this light a bit. where I usually start to have some, some trouble in a composition. Because I am going to put in some pine trees and a bit of so I'm pull some sap green down. Get some more liquid white. bright red I picked up in there is going to make a little bit of a brown. Kind of take a little bit of that green away. What I usually have an issue with is determining what 
this should look like here. We've got a couple of hills. We're going to kind of frame this. See, my canvas is a little loose here. Frame this. Uh, we're just using. Pine trees have something to live on. And now we're going to take a little bit of our Van Dyke Brown into this green we were mixing down here. We're going to make it more of a brown brown with a green lean. And the value needs to be a bit darker than this but still room to go bold and dark on our colors. So we seem to be down quite a bit so I'm going to pick up some more of this liquid white up here. drop in right here and yeah I'm going to use a different brush because that one is not narrow enough so let me step off to the side here grab another of my fan brushes didn't set enough out when I use that one for the clouds I can't clean it off enough we don't want blue all over Here's mostly sap green, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, a little bit of crimson in there. Crimson is going to take a little bit of that green away again, make it even more brown. We should have a green leaning mixture here. Bring in some more of the white so we can see what our color looks like. And I would say we need to go with more green. As you can see down here, it's, it looks green, but I want it to be obvious that it's green because so far we've got violet, indigo, and blue in our scene, and I want to move on to green. So we've got that looks fairly green. Take my knife off. All right, so we're gonna load up the brush. Back into where we were here. Start one here. And this is one of the technical aspects that I still need to uh, still need to work on improving. My trees don't uh, don't execute the greatest. So that's a technical skill I'm still lacking. Just getting these trees just right. <clears throat> He's got a friend here. A little bit of oil on here. side too. You can use as many, as few or as many of these as you would like. It's your world. It adds, trying to add a little bit of balance here. We've got this big thing here. Giving some visual resting places for the eyes as they walk, work across your scene. I 
and so we're gonna add one or two over. Yeah. Guess I should reference that thumbnail again, huh? But this is where I start to run into issues because. Yeah, let me just do an indication of server back here in the. We're back in the distance here. Whole forest back behind us here. I think this is probably where I get my perspective all. Just some indications of some branches back in here. I think I've seen them use a larger, larger brush and just kind of pull up and make make little peaks, but we're not that far away yet, so. These trees are a bit closer to us than that, so they get a little bit of detail added in. <clears throat> Mostly we're just to give indications of these trees. So we're painting individual individual little trees. They're close enough to make out individuals. But not close enough to uh, really see a lot of detail in them. Let's see spots where the a little bit thicker. And this light gets through. Nice little forest in front of this mountain. And that's kind of how things tend to grow around the mountains. You have pine trees up a little further than you have the deciduous trees. Uh, yeah, we will be painting over top of a lot of this. And don't get too worked up over the individual imperfections in your trees. None of the trees are perfect out there. And even when you're out looking for that Christmas tree, the perfect Christmas tree usually settles on, well, I like the flaws that this one has. It has a unique look to it. It's going to look great in our living room. We can work around that bend in the trunk. And these ones just happen to be a couple of trees that got a little bit closer. So this forest kind of turned its way around. We've got a few trees just at the edge that, that the forest comes out. Alright. So we're going to take our liner brush. You know, these ones are far enough away we don't need a liner brush. We're just going to bring in a little bit of our cad yellow in here. I'm just going to touch up a little bit of light on these trees, not a lot. Bring that value up just a little bit more in the distance. And we've got a little bit of light hitting up here. A little bit less on the left side than the right side. Because our light's coming in from the right. It helps set these trees in the scene that they're in the same lighting as the rest of the image, the rest of the painting. Worked in computers for a lot of years and I often tend to think in terms of computer images and 
set of photographs or paintings. And this just kind of breaks up the skyline. Alright, so... What we're going to go with next is... Some yellow ochre and Indian yellow. Mixed into this green, we're going to become even darker as we come even another plane forward into this view. And here we just kind of have a another rolling hill. You have to think in the terms of planes. This is going to come up. get in here we're going to add a little more of the yellows. We've got variation in grass as we can see now. Pick up more of this green. Continue our hillside that comes up. <clears throat> and we're going to use this line the mountain creates visually to kind of point our attention over here. We're going to have a nice deciduous tree right in this region here. brush horizontally and just kind of tapping them, pushing up, picking those bristles up. This makes a lot of things to happen on the canvas at once. <clears throat> so we have a nice kind of a meadowy field. I'm just going to go ahead and bring that all the way on down. Top of it a little bit with some reds, but keep going more yellow as we get closer. So we transition right into, into the yellows as we get closer. Bring down some yellow ochres. some things to make this visually interesting in here. Closer. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm just going to drag a little bit of this bright red around. Just get a little bit on the bristles here. We're going to start adding in some bunches of little flowers. Kind of dancing in here as we start getting into our oranges and reds. Have a nice open field. Getting closer, you can start to see more of the bits of flowers in here. But we need some trees. I actually like like what we're going with with the colors here. Get some of that red off of there. Get back into our green. Get some of that off. Because we want to go very dark on these front trees here. So we're gonna take our palette knife. We're going to pull down some black and some green together here. And 
know, you can't really see what I'm doing here, so let me turn towards the camera. Under this, we're going to add a good bit of yellow ochre. Start to turn to the yellows. I think today we'll use the round brush. So we're going to pick up this paint on our round brush. And we're going to think in terms of branches. So we've got, let's see what we can do this right here. friends here. Look at the shapes. A little bit smaller there. We want this one to be our predominant tree. We're going to have one right here. And these trees are not in a row. off much of that off of the round brush as we can because these are going to be yellow destroy the darts, but we're letting this yellow be a little bit of a dark. We're going to add some highlights to it here. I need some oil under this so it's not sticking the greatest. We're going to take a liner brush and we're going to bring in some trunks. So let's get a trunk mixture. Nice dark Van Dyke brown. Black, a little bit of that crimson in here, a little bit of sap green. We're going to want to make this bring some oil into this because we want this to stick as well. Think about how our tree grew out here. Where are those branches at? Down into our trunk. We're going to give them some feet. Pick up a lot of that paint on our way. of some branches out in here. One last branch off of here. <clears throat> Pick 
some more of this paint and fill this in more solid. We got our darks on this side. A little bit of highlights going on there. And we'll bring this over. You do the same thing to the other two trees. His buddies need some uh, support as well. So we're going to lightly draw this in. And he looks to be kind of in line with his friends here. So it won't be too different. Quite as big as his pal there. And then we will this one. He's gonna live kind of a little bit closer to the front. He is the smallest of the group. Some indications of some branches in here. Not to be anything fancy. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not happy with what's going on back there. As I step back and look at this piece, there's too too much of a row. There's too much, not enough variation in here. So over here, we kind of get a little variation because we have depth and difference in heights. We're missing that over here, so we might have to go back in there and add some more pine trees. What we're going to do is we're going to take, take our palette knife now and we're going to pick up some liquid white, titanium white. A little bit of oil in here. We're going to make a little highlight for the side of these trees. Nice light gray brown. Gonna touch it on here. And now it's some of these branches back in here. trees. And we are going to make a nice bright orange. Put some of this liquid white in here. I really want this to pop. So we're going to pick up our cad yellow. And here we go.
crimson for this one. A little crimson in the mix. take gotta get some more brushes without this cleaning in the middle I'm just gonna bring down here this crimson out I'm just gonna put some bushy things in here we were using for the pine trees and we're gonna pick up some more of this pine trees we gotta get some variation in here there too too static back in here like the appearance of my trees yet. So I'm going to bring out some more cad yellow here. I've got trees ending in the same spot. Turning this one light off here. See if it helps bring in the sky a little more. <clears throat> Alright, so we got our mountain here, we've got our focal point here, but I need to dress that up more. So I'm gonna get out some more cad yellow here. Because I really want this to be more of a yellow orange than a than the red that it's showing right now. We've kind of lost our yellows out of the painting. So we're missing a few colors of the rainbows. We wanted to have them in here. And I'm going back in and extending this tree down. Kind of ended them all at the same spot. 
that's not very realistic. So back into that brown brush. I want to clean off as much of that red out of there as I can off of my brush. Again, I'm not using any uh, paint thinner while I'm painting. I do use it to clean the brushes after I'm done. But So I use a lot of dirty brushes until I manage to buy some more. I want to bring in some white. I want this to really be bright yellow. Still getting too much blending. I'm just I'm gonna push in too too hard. Got lots of little things happening in here now. And there we have. I think we're going to go ahead and sign this one and call it done. You know, we need something else going on down front down here too. So I'm going to take this little three quarter inch brush that I have. I'm going to tap in some bright red. Kind of that's what's missing. I just remember to... We're missing some sticks and twigs in this kind of a briary bush. So we're just going to take our palette knife. We're just going to try to scratch in some These guys a little more structure. <clears throat> and then we'll just do a tap on those. Some crimson. A little bit of stuff going on here.
some variation. When you get a bunch of colors like this, it just kind of looks like you blocked it in. And that there's, it's missing. So we're kind of adding some flair right along those stems. <clears throat> you can't really see it, I guess, on that camera view. Let me try to zoom in here a little bit and see if you can see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing here. There's little bits of yellow and gold appearing out in here. Some darker, uh, some darker regions as well. And so, basically, on this one, we've got a nice visual mountain up in that top third. Still need to practice executing on the uh, pine trees. I need to ex practice executing on these foreground trees here. It could have been a little more prominent, a little more colorful. So I don't believe we've achieved quite that uh, wall-worthy art yet. We are still on our journey to do so. So let's go ahead and sign this one, and we will continue our journey on Wednesday. I think I'm trying some thumbnails for Wednesday for uh, some hills, maybe some hot air balloons. Something I haven't completely tried yet. Want to see how that turns out. Now, what I'm going to do is actually just going to pull some Van Dyke Brown, get some oil on there. Do I have any oil left in my can up here? I'm going to sign this in the Van Dyke Brown today. I think we're going to sign it right, right here. More brown. Is that just not in the painting at all? Well, that is not standing out at all. I would have expected that to be a lot, a lot darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to it here. The reason why it's not quite as dark is it's mixing with this paint already on the canvas and is really lightening the uh, Really lightening it up fast. Small amount of paint on my brush, large amount of paint on the canvas. Yeah, it's really, uh, really affects how it appears. Which means obviously I don't have it runny enough. It's not quite thin enough paint to kind of flow off the brush the way it should. It needs to be pretty runny. And even though I don't consider this one wall worthy, I think it's still important to sign your work and own your work and watch how you've improved over time. Well, you sign it and you date it. And maybe somebody wants to decorate their closet with it. Actually, I don't think it's that horrible of a piece, but it's certainly lacking. I think the mountain came out pretty well. Mountains in the background came out well. I think the sky came out pretty well. The composition kind of fell apart in the, in the foreground by not having very interesting subjects in the foreground to look at. Kind of running downhill here. 
little bit on the uphill I guess it looks like I'm going right now. Let's see if I can bring this back down. I think it might just be out of the frame of the video. want to come off the brush. Basically I go through it once and pull the paint up and then I have to go over it again and actually leave the paint behind. It's just too much pressure. Should probably just do the whole name and then go over it with. Pull that paint out of there. Something else we may cut out of a lot of these videos is me signing the work because that is not a fast process. Make the signature detract from your painting. I'm debating whether to change it to just just my initials. The problem with just your initials is that over time it's great. When people know who you are and know what to look for. When you're starting out, you don't have a name out there and people see a painting they like they see the actual name on it, they know what to look for to find more of your work. They see just initials. Doing a search isn't going to result in anything for them. one of the frustrating things with watching other people paint is they forget to tell you a lot of the things that went into making that painting such a gorgeous painting they just make it look so easy and it's easy easy enough that you can paint along and have fun but if your goal is to actually end up with a beautiful painting it helps to know all the decisions that went into making that painting beautiful so that you can kind of replicate that on your own paintings. A bit here. All right. So there's our finished piece for the day. I mean, we kept what we had intended. We have our violet sky with our indigo clouds. We've got our blue mountains. <clears throat> we have our green pine trees. We moved into our oranges and yellows with these deciduous trees here and then ended with some nice vibrant uh, red crimson. So we have all the colors of the rainbow represented in here based off the palette we're working with. So in that regard, it was a success. It's just, if the composition had been better, it would have been a better wall-worthy piece of art. So if you're interested in following this journey, please subscribe. And if you like this video, like. And if you have inquiries about this painting, feel free to leave them in the comments or direct message me. the uh, painting process will continue. So until next time, remember, don't be too hard on yourself. Just keep painting because practice makes improvement. And uh, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>